Another Ants on a Rock video. Welcome to the Ant Corner. Episode 5. Tank Maintenance. So, as you can see, my tank is a mess. So it needs some maintenance done. In fact, it needs a complete MOT. And this is because the dives escaped. They found this wire on top of the fan. Now, I had been using a PTF barrier around the fan but it seems that it's dried out without me noticing and they've got onto the side of the fan climbed up the wire and got straight out moving half the colony brood, pupa and one of the queens they found a cardboard box that was sat near to the tank filled with shredded paper and decided to nest in that we managed to get the entire box into the tank and I managed to sort that out. Doing so, messed up the tank, made a mess, all the plants were all over the place, so it needs a complete overhaul. So, this is the first hard bit, taking the lid off. Attached to this section are two grow lights, set on timers. So this whole section needs to be taken off very carefully, because they're only attached by magnets and sticky pads. There goes one, you may also notice that the grow lights are a purple colour. This is because they're operating on the red and blue colour spectrum. Studies show that some ant species have increased foraging activities in the red and blue spectrum, mainly in the blue towards green actually, and the red they cannot really see. Meaning, if anything, this grow light can be beneficial for the ants as well. Now moving back to the tank. Getting the light off exposes the whole open top. And as you can see, there's still quite a decent barrier of talcum powder around the outside. Now this is what I generally use. It's talcum powder with rubbing alcohol. And as the rubbing alcohol goes away, it leaves this paste behind that the ants struggled across. Now, moving on to the plants. They all grown really, really well. As you can see, they've completely exploded and I can barely see into the nest section. So the first thing I'm going to do is start trimming back some of these ferns and other plants just to give me more visual access, basically. So just going in there with my scissors. Cutting away. I'm not being too careful. I can see if there's any ants on the leaves and I just won't. Just cutting away, making that a bit easier to see in. Then it's a matter of just going in, collecting some of this litter out. I do put leaf litter in, but I try and collect most of this out and leave it for another day. I even use it as fertilizer and mix it into the soils. Things like that will rot down and help with fertility. So it's all beneficial and it all gets cycled through again. Nothing gets wasted. Now I've got that a bit more under control, it's time to tackle the glass. As the box got chucked in, the talcum powder went everywhere, all over the glass, so it's basically time to give it a good clean. I generally do this whenever I'm filming anyways, just to try and get the best footage I can, so it's quite a normal thing for me to do. As you can see, the reflections in it are absolutely awful, so I do apologise for that. But you get the gist of what I'm doing. All I use is cotton wool in my tweezers and I spray it with mineral water. I go over it several times with the wet and then I go over it with a dry cotton wool just to try and get off any excess. Now rebuilding the tanks fairly easy for most of it. There goes on the main light section and here you can see the sticky pads that the grow lights go on. Next, I need to attach the grow lights. 
what they say they are purple because they're at the red and blue spectrum which is great for the plants and not too bad for the ants as well it also shows that in studies plants under the red and blue spectrum won't grow as high but they will sooner flower which is basically what I'd prefer in this tank because I don't want to be trimming it back all the time gently placing this lid back down so hopefully the grow lights don't fall off the magnets it has happened before and it's an absolute nightmare and I have to reach in and burn my arm on the main lights above Now it's starting to look a bit better, a bit more like the tank that we're used to. Now we fixed the tank but we haven't actually solved the issue, if they want to get out again I'm sure they can. I have this inset mesh that I'm going to cover all the holes with, basically I'm just going to cut it out to shape, use sticky tape and stick it down really really well. At this point I need to say thank you to my helpful assistant who helped me sort this out and in actual fact dealt with the whole Polyracus Dives escapee moment whilst I was about 50 miles away and couldn't do anything about it. So well done to the wife for sorting that. I don't think she even got bit although she did scream a lot. The next thing I'm going to do, which I actually didn't get footage of, is I put another talcum powder barrier all around the fan in a square box shape, completely boxing it in, so hopefully they won't be able to get onto the fan again and onto the wire to get up to this section, and if they do, they're not getting out. Now, back to the pond. I'm going to show you some footage from last episode of my crab mainly because it has been burrowing away for the last few days and I haven't seen it at all. I've tried and tried and come back at night and not a sign, so it might well be molting. This week we were going to name the crab Mr. Crabs, but I'm actually going to leave it one more episode as I'm hoping to get a few more votes in on the name. We currently have four suggestions and I will list them in the comments section below. So make sure you put a like on your preferred choice but i have a surprise i have two more vampire crabs coming so three names will be chosen out of the four the top three leaving the last name so i will continue to call this one mr crabs for now now talking about tank maintenance the tank needs water top ups every probably three to five days with about a litre of mineral water. I have mineral water left on standby at pretty much all times. Leaving it to sit is quite good, especially leaving it to the open air. This just exposes it to the conditions of the room, getting it to the right temperature and so forth. I also do pH checks on the water about once a month. I've only performed one at the moment and I'm going to do another one. So soon and that's just to make sure that it's a healthy environment for the critters that live in the pond so as I said I do a water top up in the pond and this is because it is basically so hot in there it evaporates into the humidity and that is basically what I use to water the entire tank I don't actually water the tank I occasionally might spray the mosses but there's no need to water the tank because during the night time it gets very humid in there and it seems to make its own rain clouds. Not quite rain clouds, but you know what I mean. It is raining down the sides of the glass and everything's growing so well I actually haven't watered much since the tank began. 
So that's another bonus of having this. The water level is actually the same level throughout the entire bottom of the tank when you look at the bot back section where the pump is. That's because that draws out of the actual drainage layer, whereas this is a built up dam section. So as the water leaves the built up dam section, it enters the pump section where all the water has access to the entire tank. So there's actually about six to eight liters of water available to flow through the pond and over all the carbon at any given point. So it does require quite a bit of topping up on occasion. Feeding the crabs fairly easy. I put lots of bloodworm and other little critters in the pond which it seemed to feast on quite regularly. I've noticed it might have eaten a few of the other insects as well which is completely fine because that's a natural ecosystem. I have added more and more bloodworm some of it just on the logs and things like that. I've also tried some cucumber and some other things, but like I say, I haven't even seen it for a few days, so I'm not going to be able to give you any reports on how it eats those things. But hopefully, given a couple more, we might see a bit more and be able to do a bit more investigating into what this crab likes to eat, what it prefers, and its lifestyle and habits. So I'm really excited for that. Again, a bit more maintenance, the pump does get blocked quite regularly, probably sometimes it's daily, sometimes it's two or three times a day, sometimes it would be fine for a week or so. It really depends on how much rubbish the ants and everything is getting into the pond. Um, it's quite simple, I just move the stone blocks, hopefully not getting bitten at the same time. I un mount the uh, pump from what it's standing I blow through the pump so it blows back through and it generally starts to work again and pump the water and then it's just a matter of reattaching it and getting the water flowing but when this happens it normally empties the pond section down to about an inch of water which is a bit of a pain for all the critters that are in it so I do keep the camera on standby as well which is linked via Wi-Fi to an iPad, which I can basically take to any room that I'm going to sit in for a few hours, and I can just watch what's going on. I can keep a general eye on the tank, and keep a general eye on the critters that are living in it, although I don't really do much about it, unless it's maintenance. If they're fighting in there, then that's completely fine. Although we haven't had many fights yet, we've had a little bit of bullying and things and the dives being quite possessive of the food that they claim but the foods that they're not claiming they're really not bothered about and after they have their initial fill they are more than happy to share with the other insects living in here again i'm really excited to get more crabs i really do like these things this seems to be the burrow that he's chosen and he has seemed to have dug it out sorry for calling him a he again obviously i'm not sure and moving on to the dives. Now, when we had the escapees, we had the opportunity to see how large the colony was. And my God, they do have a lot of brood. They also have a lot of workers, and each single one was carrying uh, either a larvae or a pupae around the new nest site in this cardboard box. So, just to give you a slight idea, here's a short feeding video or a few clips of feeding so you can see just how many come out to feed and please do bear in mind i give them two of these large crickets or locusts or whatever they are every other day currently and they devour them like this every time
Now, other things going on with the tank. From what I can tell, this beetle is laying eggs because it's been doing this for days and all the little crevices. Which is pretty much what I wanted. It's gonna turn into Mario worms, which should be a good food source for the polybacus dives. Obviously, if the population does get out of control, I am completely able to deal with it and remove what needs to be done. Um, I do actually also have another stock of beetles, which is just hatched from Mario worms, where I had pupated them myself, and it's just hatched. So they're spares in case I needed more for the tank, but all the ones in the tank seem to have hatched as well, so I've ended up with lots of extras. So I might actually start a small Mario worm farm whilst I'm at it, because I can never have too much live feeder food for my ants. Here's basically just a quick look at the pupa and beetles. This was a few days ago, this footage. So they've actually all hatched now and completely turned black. Here's one recently hatched and it's still white and soft. As they harden, they turn darker and darker until they are jet black, like the one you saw a minute ago. Of course I do have spare tanks for pretty much every inhabitant that I put into the multi-species vivarium just in case they do breed like I think the red flat tie millipedes are as well and possibly the vampire crabs will as well. So as although it is a natural ecosystem it is a closely controlled ecosystem as well. Of course Feel free to subscribe to my future videos, feel free to look at the rest of the playlist and of course see you again Ant fans.